Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. My name is Richard. I just want to make a quick video here to show you about LED matrix headlights, in case you're not familiar with exactly what they do and how they work. I think they're brilliant. It's really where headlight technology is at. It's very clever and it's great for safety as well. So I've got a couple of Porsche Taycans here to use to demonstrate this. Uh, this one does actually have an upgraded headlight system from a base one. So this is LED and it does some very good cornering and it's a very good system. On this Porsche, however, the blue one, we've actually got a full matrix system. So this is the Porsche Dynamic Lighting System Plus, and they do some very clever things. So I want to really show and try and demonstrate on some of these country roads here as it's getting dark, and it's already minus one at the moment, so it is a cold one, but they, exactly how they work, because you may not be familiar, and they do all sorts of shadowing and lighting up segments of road that you just wouldn't see otherwise. So this is really where headlight technology is at now. I think it's phenomenal. It's a great aspect for safety. And if you're Tesla, we want to see some of this in the Teslas, by the way, because although the modern 3s and Ys, and probably the Ss and Xs and States, because we don't get the latest ones, they've got LED matrix lights, but they're non, they don't do anything. They're just static headlight beams. So this is where the headlight technology is at. And I think these are very, very good. So let me try and demonstrate that. Once it gets dark, we'll take the cars out and see what we can show you. Okay, this is the white Porsche Taycan. Now this is already a level up from the base headlight, apparently. So this has got corner in the headlights. And whilst we're in a section of road like this with street lighting, it actually creates a very flat level beam pattern. It doesn't go up on the left hand side, it's just a flat pattern when you're traveling in urban areas with street lighting. And as we go to sections of road without street lighting, that beam pattern will change. Now it should start lighting things up, but there's another car. So it went up to high beam, but now it's dropped it because there's a car coming the other way. So it's automatically going up to its full, what I call the high beam or main beam, and it drops it when a car comes the other way. And there's a car in front of us at junction now, so it won't lift it up. But you see here, it's a really nice spread. These modern LED lights are great. Really nice spread of light. Now, you can see on the hedgerow opposite, we've now got the upward tint on the left-hand side because we drive on the left-hand side of the road here. Uh, we do now, we don't have street lights tip up on the left-hand side so we can see into the hedgerows a little bit more. Now, what this car also has is cornering headlights. So they actually turn with the steering. So there's no car, so see how it's picked up the beam and then we've got full main beam on because there's no other cars in sight. And this will be cornering in high beam and low beam. So the car's coming the other way, it's dropped it down nice and quickly. So we don't blind anybody. We've got a tint up on the left hand side so I can see the hedgerow. And as I go around the corners, I'll try and demonstrate how the headlights actually turn. So they turn around the corners nicely with the steering. And they're very good, there we go, and it's now lit up the whole road, nice and bright, I can really see everything, and then bang, drops it down, but with an upward tilt on the left hand side, so I can still see the hedgerow. I'll try and show you the corner in, so you can see the headlights actually moving with the steering there, they sort of split apart, and then as I go to the left, you see the headlights turn over to the left hand side, let's follow this car in front, so it can't give me any of the high main beam because there's a vehicle in front, so they stay low in the dip beam pattern, but they're still doing the corner in. But we can't get here any spread up to the right hand side and left hand side because of the vehicles in front. So it's just staying in dip pattern, albeit of that tint off to the upward side on the left hand side. Pattern on the road is so good. I can really see the textures. I can see any ice, puddles, potholes. You know, I can see everything. So as we come around this corner here, you can see that pattern on the left. And as I turn, see how they turn around the corner so I can see around there. It was tempted to go to full main beam then, but there's another car in front, it's still sore. So as they disappear around the corner, we should pick up to full beam. And there we go, up they go, and then boom, the extra full beam lights, and then they're gonna drop down now. And I can see the level of, you know your headlights are adjusted right, these are self-leveling headlights, is when the, I can literally see the edge of the beam pattern isn't going above the rear bumper of that car in front. So it's not shining into their car and not blinding them in their mirrors. We go around the corner, you see the headlights really turn around that corner Give me good visibility. See the pattern here, and you can actually see when I turn the steering wheel how that focus changes even on the full beam. And you can see the visibility here is excellent. In fact, it's slightly misty. I can even see the headlight projection moving slightly. So this is great. I come around the corner, it's shining right round. Lots of potholes in this road, so it's important to see those and not crash down a pothole. There we are, look, shining right round the corner. Look how bright they are. I don't know, you're probably picking up a reflection on that sign from the camera. And they've dipped down, but they're still cornering, and I can still see all the surface of the road. 
nothing in front of me. They lift up and then bang, you've got the full main beam as well. And Tesla's headlights as well, for example, are notoriously slow to dip and they, you, they stay really bright in oncoming traffic. But look at the light on this road here. I can see everything, even when they dip down. Now, I don't want to damage a alloy wheel in a pothole, so again, I can see all the surface really clearly with this. So maybe, you know, the corner is lovely to have and the, the full matrix is lovely to have, but at least such good headlights with a good spread that automatically level yeah. and automatically dip and really should have some kind of headlight washer. Now, these don't have headlight washers, actually. Uh, it's surprising that a lot of cars used to have headlight washers with Xenon, but then now they don't need them. Yeah, there's a requirement because they're so bright. But somehow now we seem to have come out of that and we don't need them anymore. So see how it's actually lifted the, the, the dip beam and then see how it's dropping down a little bit. It goes up and down as you're going along. So as to try not to blind that car in front. So they've actually dipped into their flat level pattern at the moment. And I think what the Porsche does is kind of knows when there's uh, a street lighting or you're entering a, a 30 miles per hour zone. It tends to just keep this really flat level pattern without the tint on the left. I've been trying to work it out since I've owned this car that I often think, why don't they have the left-hand tint? What's wrong with it? But it seems to mainly not do it when you're in urban areas because it just has no need and it's causing less dazzle by not having it. Some really good headlights I had on the car as well were... Um, actually, the pole style was good. I enjoyed the headlights and that were very good. Audi e-tron 55, I remember the headlights being very good. And another car with really good headlights, apart from a Weiss ID3 was the other one, uh, was a Mercedes EQV, a van. A van with headlights that put many a car to shame, including Teslas, I have to say. And they were good. They were also cornering and they had this very fluid beam pattern that moved around. They were very clever. So if a Mercedes van can have it, anything can. And what the Teslas have is a really fixed block pattern on the left-hand side that really goes quite a long way vertically. And if you're just following a car in front, it highlights left-hand side quite well, doesn't do too bad. But what I found with the Teslas is that even if you're in the middle lane of a motorway on the inside lane, there's a car on the outside lane, that lifted pattern on left-hand side blinds you. We'll go and jump in the one with the dynamic matrix and you'll see they take it to the next level again. So this is the blue Taycan with the, what they call a PDSL Plus, a Porsche Dynamic Lighting System Plus. Over 84 segments, I think it is, or 84 segments to these headlights and all sorts of clever things uh, and includes uh, the plus means you get like intersection lighting it actually spreads it out wider at an intersection and then it adjusts the focal point and all that kind of thing but what I want to try and demonstrate is the the, uh, the matrix system so basically even if there's a car in front of me it will shadow that car in front and not blind them but it will really uh, project past the car in front even a full beam down both sides of it uh, so it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll try and demonstrate it to you. And this has really made a big difference when you, especially driving faster. We're going on some fairly slower country roads here, but imagine driving faster, having that real clear projection across everything you can, apart from the car in front that you can't blind. Okay, so we're in a street lit area, so it's not doing anything. It's not doing any high beam. It's just in a flat pattern. Uh, nice and broad, nice and white. It's LED. Now we're unlit and you'll see it's going to start doing some bits. There's a car coming the other way, but look at that, boom. And now it's creating shadows. See how it's shadowing that car? It's literally making a shadow as that car goes past, but it's still full beam in front of us here. And so it keeps everything as full, high beam, whatever you want to call it, apart from any other vehicles in front of you. And it's all automatic. It goes on when you get in the car, so it's dropped because we're at a junction. And then as we go back into the roads, it's lit up, leaving a shadow for that car. So it's still on full beam at the moment except for that car in the front. So all the left-hand side is lit up fully, all the way up that hedge. You can see everything there. You can see clearly at the junction. As I come around the corner, they come around the corners as well. And then it continuously lights up everything it can. Now that's headlights, isn't it? Here comes a car. But that's okay, we've still got full beam in front of us. See how that was still in front of us? I could see that building, even though there was a car coming head on. Now I've dropped the pattern on the right hand side, they've lowered down because there's some cars coming, but we're still full beam. I'm seeing all that road sign, all that fencing. I'm seeing this hedgerow and that tree. There we go, look, everything is lit up. And all continuous automatic and adjusting really quickly. 
So if you're, you were in front of me yesterday, were you blinded by these lights at any stage? No, I saw in front of my car. You can see the headlights, yeah. yeah. They were helping you drive your car. Your <laughs> but that's the thing, it must feel really weird for a car in front because you're projecting past them, yeah. uh, which is strange. But there's still full beam on the right, still full beam on the left. There's a car in front of us. And as you go in the corner, you see the little blocks increasing. So it dropped down, it's shadowing, see everything left. And then as they go past, doo -doo 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 -doo, all the extra bits come back on. Car comes, blocks out, still full beam on the left. Look at see, see in the hedge, there's, if there's a deer about to run out, you'd see that. And on the right hand side, look, full beam right at that tree. Except for that shadow of that car in front. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but he's in a little shadowy box, goes past, and then again it lights up everything it can on the right and left hand side. And even though we're pretty head on with this car, you can see again how much we're just lighting up the side of the road here nicely. So even as we go into the dip, because it's got that full beam going all the way up, I can see even now up that hedgerow, which the other car wouldn't be able to do. It would have had to drop the whole pattern, but this can keep the pattern up on the left-hand side. I hope the camera, this is a really bumpy road. The Taycan's got a great ride quality, but uh, this is a bumpy road, so hopefully the camera's steady. But it also means that because it can keep that high pattern, see how it's reflecting every single one of these road signs along this road? Again, another car would have had to dip to a flatter pattern and you wouldn't see those. Okay, they've all gone, so again, we can get full beam now. There's a car there, just sat in the middle of the road. Luckily, they're well highlighted, I could see them in advance. Yep, yeah, okay, you're gonna, I don't know what they're doing. That's why you need good headlights, people just do stuff like that. Just pull out and stop there. They're just working constantly. They're constantly adjusting and working. They would do different things based at different speed and different roads. I think they're amazing. Combine that with the head-up display in this car it means I don't have to take my eyes off the road at all. There we go, drop down. But look how it's firing still straight ahead. It's still full beam. You don't see the headlight pattern move quite as much around the corners with these. They do light up around the corners, but you don't see the actual kind of projector move like you do in the other Taycan. Because it's sort of illuminating segments rather than moving the whole thing, I think, is what it's doing. Give me some light. Boom. There we go. So they're probably most impressive when you're following another car because you see that constant shadowing effect. So let's try and uh, get into a situation where we're doing that. So see these segments move as he's moving. Can you see that, how that shadow right near the back of his car? And so he's thinking, why are these lights going past me? And then you'll see it here on the right. And there's a car coming, it drops it down and you see it on the left now. And you'll see it on the right literally tracks him around the corner and I can see that red row over there in front of the car in front. And you see that's keeping really close to that other car as well. So imagine there's an animal about to run out out there. If it was just a flat pattern you wouldn't see up into those hedgerows and the reflections of those signs. You watch it follow this corner car in the corner. You see that shadow? It's hard to know what the camera can pick up. I can see really well. <laughs> you see, like right past that, he's put his full beam on now. But even here on the left-hand side, all of this is just fully lit right to the top. And again, off to the right-hand side now as well. So this is exactly the case. We've got a box of that car in front, but I'm basically on full beam. See, right down there, right down there. So that's a good case. I can see that curb because of that as well. A little bit of curb that stuck out. Bad headlights, look. So that's blinding me exactly what it shouldn't be.
I, like literally, I, I, watch, I just watch what they're doing constantly. It's fascinating. If we take my eyes off the rogues, I'm just looking at what the headlights are doing constantly. But how it can shine right up all the way along there past these cars. And what I'm interested in, if I was just going front, that the head row next to you is suddenly all like bright. I don't know how, well, quite how much of that you see. Yesterday. You can see it next to you, you can, can you? You can see your lights next, but you look in the mirrors and you're like, oh, that looks fine. Yeah. But then there's this beam next to you, you're like, oh, what's going on? That's really, really cool in a bit of foggy weather. You'd see yeah. it a bit better, you know. And the good, I think the good thing of this as well, like, you, don't need, you can override this. You can sort of force everything on or force it into dip, but they're just on auto every time. and. It just always works. I never have to touch that stalk to turn them on and off and all that sort of stuff. They always react quickly and on time. So I hope that was a useful demonstration. It's more, it's clearer in person than it is on the camera, I think, looking back at some of the footage just now. Uh, so the effect is better than we can really pick up, but hopefully you get the idea of how it works. I want to demonstrate exactly what it is in case you didn't know what it was. Uh, so fantastic, and it's getting better and better. The technology is amazing. The next step of this is high definition versions of this with thousands of pixels. So Porsche, Mercedes, and uh, Audi and such like, all working on such systems and starting to bring them out now. And uh, they're bringing up uh, map directions on the ground and uh, highlight the next lane. Where the headlight technology is going is amazing. So hopefully everyone keeps up with that. And I think it should be something standard on many cars because it's such a good safety feature. And of course, with the latest Tesla Model 3s and Ys, they've got the Matrix headlights in them. They just don't do anything. So hopefully we see something with the Teslas where a software update will enable that. Uh, but that's it for now. Hope it's been interesting. We'll see you on the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R. Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.